What's up? This is number two today. It's Shaman. Welcome. If you're wondering, what is she doing? All of a sudden she was she was gone and all of a sudden she's back. And I got single Bible right here next to me. It's medicine. You know it might know it is uh, aloe vera. I'm back because we have a very heavy Mars influence. Bless up Steve. Steve, Steve, stay on here, buddy. Do you know what Babylon is, Steve? Babylon is the entire system. And in more modern times, that would be Fireboy, who is um, growling. He's got a bone, so they're kind of playing around. So in more modern times, you know, we call the system the matrix, but it's a system. It's everything around you that you're forced to comply with. So I'm going to wait and see if a few people are going to join. And if not, people can always watch this later if they choose. These are things that were, you know, taught to me back in the 70s. And they're going to be pretty vital and crucial for things and times coming up. So any of you who know a little bit about astrology or a lot about astrology know that come, we're coming into a building of entering into Mars um, starting around June 26th. And um, during that time, there could be a lot more tension, a lot more tension in the world in different places because of this Mars, you know? June 26 until a good part of the summer. So just, you know, have yourself a little prepared for it. Um, I have people on my page that I know are unaware of what Babylon is, and yet they may have heard a little bit of me talking about it uh, because they come to my shop here in Cloquet. So Babylon is a system. Babylon is a vampire because it's sex energy. Blood is energy. You know, uh, vibration is energy. Your mood is, you know, part of your energy. I just got done mowing the lawn because Babylon expects for things to be very appearance um, proper. And so we have a lawn that's basically useless, but it's got to be kept under control like everything else. That's what Babylon wants. So Babylon wants and needs, bless up Kim. Uh, we're just speaking a little bit about Babylon and introducing my beautiful single Bible here, which people know typically as uh, bless up, bless up, greetings. I know this is number two and I mentioned that it's a little bit of education or education because starting around June 26, we're gonna have a very heavy heavy Mars influence. And some of the wizardly, Wizard of Osley powers that be kind of take advantage of that sometimes because they know people are in a little bit more of chaos. So let's kind of clarify Babylon is a system in more modern times thanks to the beautiful movie. Um, it, we also call it the matrix, but the system is all around you. The majority of the people are heavily inundated by the system and they're heavily sedated by the system. So the system, let me just give you a couple of examples because I don't mean for this to be a half an hour or an hour. I mean for you to be able to watch this at your leisure and learn a little bit. So I don't come on here. I've had a full day and getting outside and running my errands and working with some clients and just mowing the lawn. I don't go and you know, crimp and, and put all kind of eyeshadow and, you know, all different kinds of things on before I give these. I mean, I am who I am. So that's, that's how it goes. Okay. Um, I wrote a couple of notes here really fast because I was mowing the lawn and I was, it just came to me that they, they kept saying it in my ear. So, okay. Um, I'll come back on. So um, the reason why is because as of June 626, so not too long from now, we have this heavy Mars influence. And um, James Kelleher is wonderful to read at jameskelleher.com. He's my absolute, you know, go-to for who I've done readings for um, 
for over 20 some odd years, as well as Jay Willie. Um, and so as I was doing this, you know, I'm thinking about why I have this absolutely useless lawn that I have to mow as I'm pushing it up and down, you know, the hill. You know, I was thinking to myself, how could I explain Babylon and that Babylon is a vampire? And that's, you know, look at the medical system. I mean, I remember 20 some odd years ago, you know, sharing with people, why would we need to take that many tubes and vials of blood from people all the time? I mean, how obvious is that? How much more obvious could it be? Like, we need a drop of blood at the most. And I want you to know that the hair testing that I do, hair is a tissue. And it's closest to the blood-brain barrier blood. And it gives you about a three-month index on what's going on inside of you with the most important things. Your minerals and heavy toxic metals and... You know, it just, for $125, you got to pay out of your pocket most of the time. Most of the time, your insurance isn't going to cover it. Most of the time, if you go to a Western allopathic doctor exclusively, they're going to be like, I don't know what to do with that. But I can help you, and honestly, I'll just say, hey, you don't need a consult. Just read it over, or hey, a consult wouldn't be a bad idea. So the medical system is taking all this blood, and what are they doing with it? I started just asking people, like, um, you know, there's Julie Myers, right, Julie? I, I asked you when you were on the table years ago, like, what are, what are we doing with this blood? And, you know, we don't need to take blood from the body. It's ludicrous. Like, there isn't really anything you get from taking the blood out of your body. Like, if people stopped eating mucus tomorrow and stopped eating blood, we'd never have to take blood ever again. So the medical system is my first Babylon is a vampire, okay? The second one, gosh, I can't even read my own writing. Oh, the church, the church, the religion. I was a small child when they said, we've got to eat the body and drink the blood of Jesus. And I thought, you've got to be freaking kidding me. There's no way I want to be a cannibal. I mean, after all, they were showing all the white children that Africa was this place full of huts and cannibals and, and weird people with all the different shows that they had on TV from like, you know, the 50s and 60s. That was a hell of a mind screw. I mean, so that's what they were doing is they were creating that, you know, Africans were these lower inferior beings by postulating all these black and white and then eventually color movies that little European children sat down to watch. So, you know, the church, no, I'm not going to eat the body and drink the blood and don't try to explain it away because it is what it is, res ipsa. It, you know, it stands out for what it is, which is another pedophilic blood-based cult. It's a cult, okay? So that's what it is right there, okay? Now, another huge Babylon is a vampire is a factory farming situation. I mean, my God, trillions upon trillions of animals since I became aware in around 1984 have been going through bludgeoning and horrific lives, living in there scared to death, having their babies taken away, and innocent beings who have the same thing you do, two eyes, a nose, a mouth, ears, okay? They've got skin, they've got uh, hair or fur, they feel hot and cold. They have one heart. They have a liver. They have a spleen. For God's sakes, could it be any more clear? They are you. You are another domesticated form of them. Part ocean, part land animal, fractal based. You were created all right, but not who you think. and Not by who you think. Not at all. Okay? So... That's why I had to even step away from Rastafari, you know, after about 30 years is because I realized that religion had stepped inside of everything, that every time I went out to a reggae show and people were Rasta, they were sucking up on alcohol and yamming down on pork and beans. And, you know, it's, it wasn't a judgmental thing. What it was was, I think I just got to do me. I think I got to like absolve myself of belonging to any group. 
And even my son, Zawa, you know, his jaw dropped. He was like, what? I mean, that's always been you. And I said, you know, when all of them end up going to the Seventh-day Adventist church, because religion does what? It feeds people. And what does it feed people? It feeds them. It feeds the food banks. And it feeds them full of wheat and system food. I was taking a picture at 8 o'clock this morning at the dog park before my 9 o'clock client getting the dogs out. And up pulls the infamous Cisco truck. System company food. And they're bringing their crap everywhere. It's nasty crap that isn't food. It's empty calorie food. Dirty food. And they bring it to all these hamburger and french fry places that serve nasty crap all the time, blood-based, empty-calorie stuff. So you got to wake up. you got to wake up and live, okay? And Kim's going to dare me one of these times to do one of my little impromptu rap um, songs or something because i got a really, really phenomenal sense of humor, but you guys just don't really ever see it. But I got it. It's in there, okay? Now, after the factory farms and all the blood that they spew all over the place, what else do I have? I've got money and taxation. Like, you know, if you don't have money, you don't get to go to the store or your child doesn't get to go to the store and get some food. That's pretty freaking vampiric. Taxation is pretty vampiric. It's like it's bad enough that you buy a car, you make the payments, you fix the car, you put the tabs on the car, you insure the damn car, and now what? Now I'm not even allowed to sleep in my car if I go back home to Santa Cruz. Let's see if I can get some light here. That's better. Okay. Now if I go back home to Santa Cruz, somebody at police knocked on my window and security guards when I, when I parked at Trader Joe's by Pacific Garden Mall and I parked in Boulder Creek. I said, you got to be freaking kidding me. By the time I pay for all these things on the car and I can't sleep in my own damn car, I pay for these roads. I am a taxpayer. I pay for these roads. I pay for that car. And for all intents and purposes, I pay your damn salary. So you know what? I'm going to sleep in my damn car. To which I heard, go ahead, because the next time I move you, Ms. Pringle, because I had to give my ID finally because I was getting pissed off, he said, you know, next time you're going to go to jail. So I kind of gave it up because I didn't really want to ruin my vacation. And I got I kept it real and I kept it moving. But you know what? You can use this period, this upcoming period of Mars, and you can give yourself a stimulus. You know, like remember how the president did and he sent that stimulus check out to everybody? You can give yourself a stimulus, a little prod, and you can say, you know, maybe I better kind of look at how I'm thinking about things. Like, Maybe I better kind of wake up a little bit more because I might kind of get left behind when things start moving because it's like all of a sudden the bottleneck has been really clogged for a long time with all these dirty, unscrupulous, nasty things going on and how we treat people and how we treat the animals and how we treat Great Mother, this, this beautiful planet that takes care of us, this beautiful living, wherever you want to call her, Gaia or Mother Earth or, you know, she's... She's hosting you, man. She's, she's giving this up to you. You can't just drill her lifeblood and frack her and throw all this plastic in her living waters and not expect to have repercussions. That's why your lungs don't function well. That's why all these people have pneumonia because they're symbiotically connected to great mother. You can't wholly ghost her. You can't give me your Caesar Borgia male, white male only religion because I didn't buy that from the time I was a little girl at the Protestant church that my neighbors took me to. I said, you got to be kidding. Right, Lena? Okay. So I'm going to try to turn my head more because, Kim, you were right. I noticed that on the video. But my, my locks are getting very long and they're very heavy, so sometimes I kind of make a sweeping head movement. Okay. Um, they want to baptize each forward generation. Okay. And what are they doing? But, oh my goodness, if it's not Count Dracula and we're glamorizing Count Dracula, now we've got, you know, more and more different, what was it? The Adams family, right? There was a vampire on that one too for my generation. And now the younger ones have 
twilight woo and they go home and they bring twilight towels and twilight sheets and twilight bathing suits and twilight shorts and what are you doing man you're not thinking you are celebrating them you're celebrating them remember karen the little toto the dog in the wizard of oz that pulled back the curtain on the great wizard and where was the wizard arkansas kansas arkansas arkansas yeah the ark of oz where they currently have been for years building miles and miles and miles of underground tunnels okay what does that tell us i don't know I'm not sure so we have all of these vampire stages we've been taught in the 50s and 60s that Africans were the cannibals. No, man, you're the cannibal. You're the one cooking up the damn dead flesh, the bloody flesh of somebody else's body that was cut from them. But you would absolutely vomit if I asked you to cook your dog on the barbecue right now, but you don't have any problem saying, I'll have a leg. Oh, I want a thigh. No, I'm kind of more of a breast person. <laughs> And you look so sweet doing it with your blonde hair dye and your fingernails all done up with the gel acrylic and everything. But man, sadly, you're in too deep. You're in too deep, okay? You're in too deep. You don't have to wonder why you don't feel good. All you gotta do is look. I mean, if you're fat and you're obese and you've got a big belly, that means you probably gotta stop eating the wheat and the cheese. Okay, simple, simple Simon right there. Okay, if you're still sending your children to school and you believe that schools are really a wonderful thing for children, you know, you probably came from the Mary Poppins generation or you have that program encoded in you and you probably need to wake up, okay? If you believe that the government is here just to take really good care of you, right, and you're not angered, by the fact that we have a misogynist sitting in the White House and that we've never ever made reparations to African people for using their blood, sweat, and tears forcibly, humiliation, painfully being whipped, experimented upon medically, entire fistula and hysterectomy surgeries were done on African women, you're in too deep. If you're going to the Catholic Church and you haven't spotted the Pope by now, you're in too deep, okay? If you're listening to country music and rap music that's misogynist and tears down the spirit and has beats, you're smoking cigarettes, you're drinking alcohol, you're in too deep. That's all. All kill all alcohol. So don't tell me you're a Rasta and be slurping down on a red stripe because I ain't buying it. Okay, because long time ago, the Rastas that taught me said we don't touch alcohol because it destroys the liver and it makes you angry. And then you can't really be, it's a movement of resistance, but it wasn't a movement of violence. Violence was perpetuated like Coral Gardens, 1963, against the Rastafari, okay, the Rastas. So Babylon is a vampire. They take the blood physically, they give you distorted images of reality. They suck the money in, out of your pocket through taxation and ridiculous amounts of fees. They dictate what it is that you're going to be able to do. And they baptize the crap out of your children while they're in those institutions all day long. And then if you don't comply with their system, they make sure and fine you again. Or they lock you up in a box because they can. Okay? So, uh, bless up everyone. Babylon is a vampire. Okay. So you can rewind it if you want to. Oh, Elizabeth, bless up, Elizabeth. Uh, we can. Territories. Ha! Why do we have to have walls and states? And you know what? Kick the fat freaking orange dude out of the office, and I got no problem stepping in unpaid. All we got to do is feed me from the garden, move the dogs in, and we will set up a council of elders within the first month. I'll find elders that are not taking medications because they're not in too deep, like myself, 
no alcohol for over 30 years, no TV since 1985, although I did see it at the hotel recently and I was <laughs> uh, bewildered. No medications, no hair dye, you know. My hair test that I did speaks it all, okay? I mean, your hair test will eventually look like that where your levels are all really nice and not perfect, not perfect at all. You know, I get stressed, I do things I shouldn't do, and I own it. I own it for sure. But uh, Babylon is a vampire, and every day, you know, the many of you that came, I've just added many people locally here to my page that I didn't before, and you want to know why? Because I was a solo, not a single, I'm not advertising my status, a solo maverick mother who came from Santa Cruz to Cloquet, which was about the most massive culture shock you can possibly imagine. I came from a very strong, high-level professional background. And I moved here, and I depended upon my massage therapy income. I had to parlay out something to support my son. And I knew that if I was too verbal about everything, which eventually, as you know, in the last many years I have been, none of you would have come to me. Hundreds of medical intuitive insights were given for free for the cost of the massage and i mean legitimate real ones and those of you that watch this you will know and you can you know indicate if that's the case um if you wish uh, real medium level insights because when you clean yourself out and you fire up on all cylinders and you've been taught intuitive from the time you were a child you will see inside the field i actually hear i actually hear what's being told to me. I wake up from vision with it on the tip of my tongue and I have to rush over and kind of write it down sometimes because if you get sidetracked, you won't remember it, okay? So it was no mistake. I have been here for thousands of years. My vehicle looked differently. I remember what it looks like in two, two other times. And um, because we're recycled, because you don't really ever die, but they repackage you. <laughs> and then they wipe the slate clean. So um, that's the deal. We are needing to come together and learn how to agree to disagree. And no, you can't just believe what you wanna believe because if it slows down and retards and impedes the progress of moving forward in a safe and stable way for the whole, then you don't get to just believe what you wanna believe, okay? Because if you're all gonna run around believing the same crap and doing the same dumb stuff and being fat and obese and being sick all the time and tired, then the carrying capacity is too great to elevate the whole. And we need a critical mass that's able to elevate the whole. And I'm not going to mince words. I'm going to keep it kind and compassionate and respectful with manners. But I am a very, very powerful person because of my remembering, hearing, and the hard work that I did going into a dark room for many, many, many years, wanting to bust out in tears on what was going on with my son living in a pig-headed racist area for a long time that wouldn't budge and my income and being able to support myself depended on that okay and the truth is going to be told period period okay so word sound i tell liberty diet reparations for african people cleaning up the blood that is spilled on the land in a way that shows compassion not just well i mean I'm going to get over it because like, it wasn't me. I mean, it was my ancestors like years ago. And I'm like, you better get the fuck out of here with that because you seriously are way, way in too deep. You still enjoy European privilege. You still are packaged in a white skin bag like I am. And you're still going to get treated differently than someone that's not in a white skin bag reparations have never happened and if this would have happened to you you'd be screaming up and down all over the place saying gosh darn it we built this country my ancestors for 400 years were um, beaten and obliterated and horrifically treated and raped and the sun's going down 
and damn it, I want what's due to me. And yet you still see polite people saying Black Lives Matter and you still get your panties all up in a bunch. Tisk tisk. If you knew what was coming, <laughs> if you knew what was coming like I do, and I'm sure many of you do, you'd start cleaning it up pretty quickly. All right? Mwah! Don't, don't get it twisted. There's work to be done.